Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO Last Days of Europe, which we're playing as a P-A-B. We are all brothers here, well at least some of, some of us are, but regardless, let's go ahead and do another focus. Last time we united Western Russia under the correct rule of Wagner, but we'll see what happens in this episode regarding him, the blood. Russia has lacked a strong central authority over 20 years now. Before a conquest, it was a land characterized by madness and anarchy. Criminals preyed upon Ubermensch and Untermensch alike. Even now, with everything west of the Euros under our boot, there's still a pervasive sense of lawlessness outside the heavily garrisoned cities. We will not stand for this any longer. There must be a sense of security for the Aryan race to thrive and for slaves to work safely. Luckily, the Brotherhood has no shortage of volunteers with plenty of combat experience and an eagerness to keep the peace. We will form a new domestic security force with these volunteers. While their brothers are preparing for our next conquest, we shall entrust these men with enforcing the new laws outlined in the Aryan Code. They will bring stability to Russia, using whatever methods they consider necessary, knowing that dissent and disruption cannot be tolerated if the bloodline or the Aryan bloodline is to survive. The methods they choose to use might be unpleasant, and in fact, they definitely will be extremely so, but this is how it must be. If our laws are to, to be respected, the people must learn to fear those who enforce them. And we become security service, slightly more cost, but nonetheless, it is still good. Because that's okay, we have no debt, and our annual deficit is not bad right now. We can't even build anything. Oh, well, consumer goods went back up, whatever. A few comms to go through, but we shall get to them in time. Actually, we are already halfway through that, which is not bad. And the next, what is that, red? Red here? What type of ideology are they promoting here? Authoritarian democracy, yes, of course, but... Oop, a little bit of lag. Authoritarian socialism and awe-purified brotherhood? What is that about? But regardless, we must talk about the soil. The farms and pastures of our nation lie in ruins. Many of them have been abandoned. The buildings left to decay and the fields overgrown with weeds. Others are still half-destroyed. Oh, look at that. Litter with craters and unexploded ordnance from the time of the German bombing runs. Even the fields that do produce some goods are worked by slaves wielding outdated equipment. Instead of chemical fertilizers and tractors, the farms of our nation are fertilized with the manure and plowed by horse-drawn plows. Our agriculture is not even stuck in the 19th century. It is stuck in the 15th century. This cannot be allowed to continue. While the Slavs may have been content to wallow in the Middle Ages, the Aryan people demand and deserve a modern nation. Land must be cleared for the new farms, orchids, and pastures. And those that Ubuntu and the Untermensch abandoned, those that the Untermensch abandoned will be reclaimed. These farms will be distributed to Aryans who will own the land and be responsible for overseeing the locals that we will conscript to work on it. We will create a new plantation system that will produce all the crops and livestock our people could ever want. The bounties offered by the Russian soil are best. All we need to do is assert our mastery over it. They'll actually get better. Agricultural production, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Anything for here? Liquid reserves, thank you very much. Not very much. But we will take whatever we can get. Cheetah unifies the Russian Far East. Very cool. Far Eastern Imperial Realm. And I can't do anything here. Oh, we still need to integrate more places. That's fine. Just keep 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 integrating. Right of ascension is good. Oh, I would love to do this stuff. But honestly, I think it's more important to just go ahead and just core everything we can first. Because it takes so long, so. It's a necessary evil first. We're making any more divisions yet. We are making one at a time. We are missing 14 main battle tanks, of course. Because we did throw on main battle tanks on our line. And I did convert some of our light infantry to be normal, regular infantry. So that's why some of these are looking really, really, really bad. Minus 365. Minus 364. The Brotherhood needs blood. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. Because we must do the Rite of Ascension. Good. More manpower. Beautiful. And after the soil, we shall do the perfect few. Our race is in a precarious situation. There is no denying that we are foreigners in our own homeland. The Slavs, Tartars, Bashkirs, and all other slave races that infest our nation vastly outnumber us. They have millions to our thousands, and despite our desperate attempts to find the Aryans hidden among their number, that gap will only grow. Members of the Brotherhood's leadership have debated how to handle the issue. Some members, led by Siegfried Schultz, Argue we must expand Aryanism's definition to include more of the people living within our borders to avoid dooming our race to forever being a minority. The Fourier and his supporters argue that this would be a betrayal of the Aryan race. It would only corrupt the bloodline and see our people absorbed by the Slavic hordes within a generation. While these arguments have only grown fiercer as the weeks have worn on, and a subhuman revolt seems more and more likely, both sides agree on one course of action, regardless of who we consider Aryan. All power must be within Aryan hands. Currently, there are still Untermensch landowners, Untermensch militia leaders, and even Untermensch politicians attempting to act as a bridge between races. 
We will put a stop to this. Every position of power at even the smallest level will be occupied by an area. Those of humans who have still have some measure of influence will be liquidated, and the threat they pose ended. More stability, cool. Area control at extreme and go with monolithic. Very good. Ah, more GDP, please. Very, very ideal. We clearly get 0.29 political power every day, not great. Oh, one of the comments from yesterday say was, let's see, plays lit house. Uh, do they have unique focus tree? They do, but that, that it's not very much. Our Shining Republic, maybe we'll see what happens. I don't know if they can actually reunite Russia under themselves. I mean, maybe they'll get updates in the future, but I'm not really sure they can, but we'll see what happens. I would also like you to teach Ditch. We share the untainted blood of our Aryan siblings in Germany, despite being equal members of the master race. Our technology is much behind theirs. Part of this is explained by the scientific communities of Russia being run by Slavs for centuries, giving us a much worse scientific base to work from. But even in recent years, as the Aryan people have reclaimed Russia, our advances have been few and far between compared to our marvelous stories we hear from across our western border. There can only be one sensible uh, explanation for this. Our language. Though we are a one race, German and Russian Aryans are divided by language. It is clear that the Russian tongue, with its Slavic influences and archaic alphabet, is holding us back. Luckily, the solution is already apparent. Years ago, some members of the Brotherhood's officer corps took it upon themselves to learn Deutsch. The language of Germany has a sign of their admiration. This trend qu quickly caught on, and there are many fluent speakers already within our ranks. We should formalize the teachings of this tongue and making it the official language of the Aryan Brotherhood. The Brotherhood will require every member to learn it, and all schools and universities within our borders will only be allowed to teach Deutsch. The transition may be bumpy, but if we are ever going to catch up with our brothers in Germany, it is a sacrifice we have to make. So be it. Better agricultural methods. Without food, men may not work, and without work, government simply ceases to function. Uh, the bureaucracy, of course, that sustained it, evaporating in a matter of weeks. However, the inverse is also true. With more food comes more plenty and more the formation of ever more complex states. After all, were not the first states formed with the creation of agriculture? New agricultural innovations will reduce the amount of hard labor needed on the fields and shift the workload to mechanized equipment, like tractors and automated harvesters. Advances in fertilizer allows crops to grow quicker and cheaper. Man will have food and will be plenty. For this bread, we thank thee. Another division. Stupendous. A true great division. Alright, so you guys... Oh, actually, no. You're going to have to form your own army now. Tristan Scott, so be it. Good. And go and stop training. I don't want to have a, too much of a deficit of main battle tanks yet, so. Go and stop training. We've got to make a positive amount finally, so. Minus 4.3 is not great. Uh, anti tank is getting better. Artillery is looking better. Everything other than that, not doing great. But main battle tanks will come online eventually. Probably putting main battle tanks for recon is probably a really bad idea, but whatever. It's already done. You know what? Go ahead and focus on these guys a lot more. And we'll refocus on guns a little later. Even though artillery could use a little bit of a boost as well. Teach Deitch. One race, or one language, two races. As instruction in the new language of our nation becomes widespread, some of these responsible for designing the language education program have come to us with a problem. While the Aryan people have taken well to the language, we can soon find ourselves in an issue where the master race speaks one language while the slave races speak another. Some Brotherhood members believe this would be a good thing and cannot help but cement, helping cement the divide between our people and the Untermensch, but it could be, create an, an enormous administrative difficulties for us in the future. If the slaves only speak Russian or Tartar or any number of minor languages, those who oversee them would be required to speak those languages as well to make their orders understood. This would condemn many Aryans to having to keep their knowledge of the inferior Slavic tongues and negate the purpose of adopting a superior language. As loath as we are to dedicate any resources to them, the Brotherhood must begin efforts to educate the slaves on at least the rudimentary basics of Deutsch, so that all Aryans ha only have to speak the language of our choice. Good. And we gotta get one more. God, I wanna get here, but we just can't do it. Alright. I would like to exert influence on the Southern Urals, but... We must purify ourselves even a mole soon. So after this, we'll do phase out Russian. Eh, you might as well. The time has come for the hardest part of our language transition. While many have been eager to learn a new language that is more efficient and proper for a new nation, the few people, even among the Aryan community, seem as excited to give up their so-called mother tongue. Unfortunately for them, the Brotherhood has also made up its mind. There is no place for the Russian language in our nation, and we must abandon it immediately if our bloodline is to achieve its full potential. Our linguists will translate everything into Deutsch as soon as possible. 
Government documents, street signs, menus, and restaurants, and all this and anything else that is written down will be changed. There will be some confusion and even chaos in the weeks that follow the switch, but that is a price we must pay for efficiency. Once the first phase is complete, of course, the next step of the plan shall begin. Everyone, er Aryan and Untermensch alike, shall be required to speak only Deutsch. Anyone caught speaking any other language will be publicly flogged, and those who we catch doing this a second time will be executed for the betrayal of the Brotherhood. These punishments are harsh, but they must be to force the people to do what is best for themselves. We must guide the people, force them to do right. I'm doing this side first just because I have to. I want to read about which side we have to do. The area does not feel intimate. Issue of slavery. Oh, not bad. Independence for Algerian Republic. Algeria, Algeria, Algeria. Very nice. Oh, look at that. More political power. Thank you. And we might actually be able to do something here. Construction. That stuff. Ooh, ooh, we get more weekly manpower, but we're doing kind of okay on manpower now. Ooh, we get more weekly stability. Um, yeah, for we get ten percent more stability. I'm gonna go and grab that one. That's pretty good, actually. Can I build anything? Oh, we can. Okay, so I'm done slashing down civilian spending. You know what? Actually, we're gonna boost it up because even though that's not that's actually not much more. So liquid reserves are looking pretty good. I'm not gonna cut down military spending too because that does affect the amount of output we have and we barely have any so I want to make sure that we don't really slash it anymore alright so expand the definition of Aryan bring down the jackboot pure Aryanism put fear in the huts I would love to do this path but we've already set up which way we want to go so expand the definition of Aryan what issue of slavery now this one's better reduces the administrative strain on your state as difficult as it is for many in the brotherhood to accept it has become clear that the lines between races are not as defined as we once thought. While there are countless Slavs who display the weakness and cowardice that marks them as Untermensch, there are many others that display the resilience and motivation we thought was only found among the master race. The Brotherhood used to explain this phenomenon by saying that Slavs demonstrating Aryan characteristics were actually either Aryans that had been indoctrinated by the subhumans, or Slavs attempting to deceive the Ubermensch by Im imitating them. As the reach has expanded, we've encountered increasing numbers of proud Slavs displaying the qualities we should expect from the Brotherhood members. Shields and his supporters have put forth an explanation for the bizarre phenomenon. It is possible to be both Slavic and Aryan. This goes completely against the established beliefs of the Brotherhood, but if it is true, it could pave the way for our salvation. If the Slavic peoples can be convinced to embrace Aryanism as part of the heritage, the master race will finally have full control of Russia. We must expand the, our criteria for Aryanism to allow for Slavs worthy of the title to earn their spots amongst our ranks. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. It just works. Oh, yeah, see. Untermensch. Absolute Untermensch. 0.43 days, not too bad. And what's the next technology we get in? Two weeks, 13 days, that's not bad. Yeah, we got time for another one. Broaden the criteria. Mm. More population, less war support, long road, consumer goods, population growth, factory output. I would do issue of slavery. An issue has loomed over the Brotherhood since its formation, one that, one that has only grown as we have expanded. By enslaving all non Aryans within our borders, we're creating the perfect recipe for an uprising that would spell doom for the Aryans of the East. We have enslaved over 90% of the population, but administering that many slaves has proven impossible. Questions of ownership have complicated matters further, leaving us in a situation where we must contend with the instability of an enslaved populace while failing to exert any control over the majority of them. Something must change, but our leaders cannot agree on what. Schultz is a reformist advocate for emancipating the slaves. As heretical as this idea seems, their case is good. The Untermensch would still be so fully subservient to the Aryan, but as free individuals, the issue of slavery or slave ownership would be eliminated. However, others in the high command, especially the close, those close to Wagner, have labeled the idea of Slavic treachery and an invitation for race mixing. They argue that we can solve the issue with the same method the Brotherhood has solved its other problems. Brute false. The slave system must be organized and the overseers must crush any signs of resistance without mercy. Both cases seem convincing, but we are running out of time and must decide soon. We must find those who preach authoritarian socialism here. Degenerates. Absolute degenerates. Ah, oh, for shame. So we don't need to see this anymore. I think the next one we'll go for is either poverty, but we wanted, like I said earlier, like, ooh, actually, I did say I want to, like, beeline. Agriculture is good. But equipment. However, I want to get the one that allows us to hire foreign instructors because I want to at least get a little bit of army professionalism because we have reluctant conscripts. Disgruntled veterans would be better because you get 10% more attack, which is just better in defense. Just. Mm. You still don't get any more political power. Division training time actually goes up by 55%, which is actually not good, but hey, whatever. There we go. And we want to do the poverty one and then focus on equipment. Very good. 
and then a long road. We cannot simply admit every Slav into the Brotherhood and pronounce them as an Aryan overnight. The Slavic bloodline has been affected by outside Asiatic races that cultivate societies of corruption and degeneracy. It was this infection that caused us to mistake the Slavs for Untermensch for so long. If the children of Russia want to reclaim the purity and supremacy of the race, they must purge the non-Aryan elements of the culture. They will not be alone in their mission. The Brotherhood is full of proud men who are exemplars of Aryan virtues that are willing to help the Slavs rediscover the ways of the Ubermensch. Together, we shall restore the Slavic peoples to the Aryan ideal that they once embodied. The first step will be to purge Russia of its decadence. True Aryans live a life of restraint and moderation, surviving on only what they need and happily sacrificing personal comfort for the society's betterment. All of Russia must learn to live this way. The Slavs will suffer greatly as we strip them of their belongings and the comforts, but this cannot be avoided. They must earn their purity through the hardship, and we will cleanse their blood's pollution in a trial of fire. Very cool. Now let's get to another comment. So, uh, what coffee are we drinking? Well, depends. It really does depend. Oh, Do we have a little bit of debt there? That's not good. Regardless, uh, coffee. Usually, I like it black. We do not need extra degenerate sugary things in our coffee. But I have a slight flavor here. Butter pecan because, well, we've opened ourselves up to the world a little bit more so we can import more different types of coffee. Just a little bit more. Just a slight tinge of butter pecan in this coffee. But I like my coffee generally how I like my uh, Fridays. Black. Especially after Thanksgiving. Looking a little better there. Anti-tank is actually looking quite a bit better as well as artillery. A long road. The way to freedom. The Aryan does not feel the Unta mensch. Break their will. Break their spirit. They should not even dare revolting. Well, let's go through this side first unless there's something really good here. Maximum production efficiency. Starting production efficiency. Line change efficiency. It does remove administrative strains. Let's do that one. As difficult as it is, we must face facts. There are too many of the Untermensch to be enslaved, and not enough of the Ubermensch to serve as masters. To run a force of a slave society onto Russia would only be repeating the mistakes of the Tsars and the Bolsheviks. Our Aryan government cannot be allowed to collapse as those regimes did. The entire fate of our bloodline rests or depends upon the Brotherhood, securing a permanent home for the race in Russia. As long as there are slaves, there are risks of uprisings, and as long as there's risks of uprisings, our people will never be safe. Schultz says the draft there a plan that would put an end to enslavement and allow for the current slaves to work their way to freedom over the next few years. While well, it is far from ideal system, the fury of first envisioned so many years ago, it will maintain the superior position of the master race in our society while also allowing for even a modicum of long-term stability. It seems that, at least for the moment, this is all that we can help for. Labor for freedom? Hmm, I wonder if there's a slogan for that. The Aryan Slave. Well, we make divisions so fast. Right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say no more for now. Because we do want Ubermensch. But I think it's just best to save on resources. Because if we do get into war, we won't have any stockpile to rely upon. So that wouldn't be good. We actually might get some APCs as well. So, the way to freedom. Broaden the criteria. The Brotherhood's conquest of Russia was both inevitable and a miracle. It was inevitable because we are Aryans and Aryans cannot be defeated. It is a miracle because the old standard of the Brotherhood, Aryans, were an incredibly rare breed in Russia. This meant our pool of available Aryan fighting men was very shallow. Manpower shortages uh, were a constant worry to our commanders. Now that we have expanded Aryanism's definition to include Slavs that can provide or prove their superior blood, the solution to this issue has presented itself. The recruitment standards of the Bro Brotherhood's Aryan units, military units, should be expanded to match the definition followed by the rest of the Brotherhood. This would open up membership to the hundreds of thousands of young Russian men looking to prove their worth and make a living. Even if not all of them have proved to be of worthy stock, many more of them will, and our nation will finally have enough men to field a truly grand army worth of, worthy of the Aryan people. This army, the living embodiment of the Aryan Slavic supremacy, will sweep east and liberate the children of Russia from the false Slavs that tyrannize them. Absolutely. Cut spending some more. Invest. We can do more construction stuff. Actually, maybe I should not cut that down anymore. Yeah, I probably shouldn't. If we do that, it doesn't cost that much more. It really doesn't. Nine? Oh, can we go any higher? Maybe not. Are we at 100%? We might be. Eh, whatever. After that, but a wonderful reward. Our efforts to accept even more worthy Aryans as members of the Master Race have begun to pay off. All across Russia, more Ubermensch are being inducted into the Brotherhood every day. And the morale of our new members is skyrocketing as they are now allowed to keep some aspects of their old Slavic culture that, have, that we have deemed Aryan. As their membership expands and the people of Russia accept us as their rightful masters who will lead them out of darkness, it is time to start preparing for the next generation of Slavic Aryan rule. For the most important duty of an Aryan woman is to raise as many Aryan children as she can to help guarantee the numerical superiority of the Master Race. This is especially 
especially important in our realm, where despite expanding our criteria, the subhumans still outnumber the Aryans almost 2 to 1. The Brotherhood will start a nationwide fertility program, teaching women about their maternal obligations and the importance of siring as many children as they can. We will offer rewards, including extra rations and financial incentives to mothers who have more than two children, with greater and greater prizes the more children a mother has. The Aryan mothers of our nation will secure our people's future in the East. Sounds like a big old breeding program. And maybe that's just what we need. Military spending. Liquid reserves. Keep investing. Actually, when's the next one we get done? 18 days. This will be done in 15 days. Right? 15? That's good. What a wonderful reward. A brotherhood needs blood. We shall nurse the soil with the blood. Uh, can we not do this yet? Oh, God's gonna hurt. Stability isn't it. Um, when can we do this? Oh god. Weekly change is minus points. Ah, oh, that's not too bad. Minus 0.6%. What a wonderful reward. Well, so be it. Actually, we're losing political power. Nope, we're actually getting some. Earning redemption. News of the Brotherhood accepting Slavs into its ranks have spread throughout the populace, and the Brotherhood has received a flood of membership applications. Many of the applicants are quite promising despite all the qualities of pure Aryans, but others still carry the weakness and inferiority that has corrupted the Slavic race for so long. These specimens have, are simply unfit to be members of a Brotherhood and the Aryan race, but they are not completely without hope. We've already seen how some Slavs resisted the pollution of their blood. We will give their brethren a chance to redeem themselves, to clear the infections within them, and reclaim their Aryan heritage through service in the military and the factories that these slaves shall learn what it means to be truly Aryan. We will, they will develop their work ethic, their perseverance, and the loyalty required to be a part of the master race. Only when they have proven their purity and devotion to the cause of the race will they be redeemed, and with their redemption, we welcome them with open arms. Those who work hard prove themselves to be true Aryans. This increases our factory output and recruitable population, but decreases our war support. And that is... A little, but no matter. It is what it is. Grab some of this. Better anti-tank. Why can we do this? Seriously. Guys, we're slowly losing our stability. Uh, earn redemption's not bad. Stability integrating. Eh, whatever. Is this going down at all? Well, that's not good. So what does this do exactly? Labor for freedom. Conversion speed plus 7.5%. Alright, whatever. Certificate Arsenal. Non Aryan military discipline raiders. Mechanical plan. Oh, do we not have. Weekly change minus 0.4. I don't really like that. Extro control is still extreme. Can't do that one yet. That's kind of not good. What's the next one done? Good. And sa racial salvation. Across Russia, a new age is dawning. Every day, more Slavs are throwing off the burdens of their past and embracing their future as a proud part of the Aryan race. What most members of the Brotherhood would have considered an impossibility even a year ago now seem within reach. The children of Russia have been reclaimed. After centuries of being corrupted and oppressed, the Brotherhood has finally led them back into, into the light. There's still much work to do be done, though. It will take decades to truly undo the stains left by centuries of Untermensch rule. Some of our government worry that Schultz has misled the Brotherhood and has bestrayed from the teachings of the Germans, but they are wrong. The millions of uplifted Aryans in our nation prove that the German invasion was both a powerful example of the massive race's might and perhaps the greatest tragedy in the history of our race. While the misguided Germans sought to destroy their fellow Aryans, the Brotherhood is not so foolish. As Ubermensch, it is our duty to rescue all who are worthy of belonging to our race. The Brotherhood's most important mission is to see the Slavic race restored. Russia will be proudly Aryan and proudly Slavic, and we will stand alongside the German Aryans as twin examples of the true master race. Wait, what decisions do we have here? Nothing? Okay. I thought I saw three up there, but maybe I'm wrong. Perhaps I was... led wrong. That's more. There you go. We're doing really well with this stuff. 14, not bad. That's actually pretty darn good, I'd say. Racial salvation. What, 18 days left? Is that fine with me? Uh, long is a way and hard. Even the reformers that pushed for the slaves' races of liberation were not insane enough to suggest that the subhumans would be just cut free to do as they want, despite how their opponents in the fears inner circle may have characterized them. Every Aryan knows that the Untermensch are so slothful, degenerate creatures that need to be motivated to work. The Emancipation Plan is designed around this fact. Slaves will need to complete a certain amount of work to earn their freedom and the few rights that will come with it. A specific amount of work required will be determined by the type of labor involved, but will equate to roughly three or four years of work in the field. The faster the work is completed, the more quickly freedom is earned. This will allow the younger and stronger slaves to earn their freedom more quickly, and through more dangerous work such as munitions, plants, or in textile mills. The weaker slaves, the children, the elderly, and the sickly will need more time to com complete their work, meaning that slaves that pose less of a threat to their masters will remain under direct control for much longer. Of course, if too many valuable slaves are earning their freedom, no one could stop us from extending, extending their enslavement for as long as needed. Work long and hard to prove their worthiness. 
maximum production efficiency goes up. Supply chain's beautiful. And let's finish our line production with wartime industry. Perfect. Seriously, um, I don't like this. As our, This is still going down, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Why is it going down still? Is it because we're integrating... Oh, it's because we're integrating Onega. Yeah, I didn't... Okay, so that's not too bad then. I thought for some reason, like, the whole Rite of Ascension thing was going on. And we were going to lose, like, a bunch. Because I, I played this off-screen before, like, at the time of this recording, like, a month ago. And, uh, yeah. You lose a lot of stability and war support, I think, and political power if you don't choose that one early on. So, Not out of kindness of hot. Well... Some within the Brotherhood worry that the leadership has gone soft. They say that the Fuhrer has been corrupted by pro-Slavic traitors. What foolishness! Empathy is weakness, and the Aryan race is not weak. We have shown not mercy to the subhumans by granting them an opportunity for freedom. We are working them harder than ever before, reaping their ever-increasing rewards as they toil for the benefit of the Ubermensch. Their decision to end slavery was not made because of childish altruism, but because it was a necessary and efficient step to guarantee the survival of our people. No true Aryan would have done anything different, and those who question the decision have exposed themselves as race traitors. They are not fueled by a love of their blood, but a ha by hatred for the Untermensch. The Untermensch are unquestionably despicable, but the first priority must always be a race and whatever is best for it. Beginning today, anyone who doubts whether we should free the slaves will be given the chance to see for themselves what a slave's life is like. By the time they they are free again, they will have doubtlessly come around to see our view of things. We do not do this out of kindness. Absolutely not. I did slash this earlier, but I think we'll be okay. Increase this. We could actually increase that too. We still have minus 5 billion every year. That's not bad. Finally, we can start building, 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 building. I will make that, that factory though. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Anywhere else, 100% uh, infrastructure of high. 80% is pretty good. 70% is pretty good too. 80%. Boom, boom, boom. It, it doesn't really matter. I think we'll I'll hopefully have enough factories, so. Especially once we conquer, like, the country to our. The illegitimate country to our east. I will leave some room for expansion, though. It is 1967, of course, though. So, let's go through that real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 Out, that out of hack leads up to light. Across our nation, news is spreading of the chance for freedom. Millions of slaves are working at a break pacing, break, back breaking pace. All hours of days and night, fueled by the hope that they will be able to reclaim even a shred of their freedom. Our production numbers have increased almost across the board. Everything from farms to mills to munition plants have shown increased output as formerly slothful slaves have begun working at a frantic pace. We should encourage this behavior from Unter Untermensch. Publicly promoting stories of workers who have already earned their freedom and encouraging them to speak about the wonders of their emancipation will prove about the promise of freedom. It's not just a rumor or a lie spread by the Brotherhood. The slaves know that the road to their freedom is not easy or safe. The recent increase in the work-related fatalities is evidence enough of that. They do not care. As long as we dangle a chance at liberation in front of them, they will do whatever it takes to reach it. The goal of this program was never to free all the slaves. It was to free the worthy and destroy those who are not. So far, it is working spectacularly. Those who prove themselves will receive salvation and ascend. This increases our production efficiency gain. At least it should. So yeah, I'm still waiting for this. Our immediately important political matters are resolved. Well, maybe once we finish this focus read, then we'll be able to do that, but we'll see what happens. Poverty relief. Yeah, poverty. It's, it, I want more GDP growth. We gotta get that. Poverty's actually doing not great, so that's why we, we gotta get that one too. Revitalize stuff. National service programs, huh? Alright, good job, England. Up next. But the strength of the will. We have offered the Untermensch a chance to demonstrate their worthiness to us. The Aryan Brotherhood cannot afford to run a slave state, and we will not tolerate leeches and parasites within our society. The former slaves now have a simple task, prove they deserve to live and free, live free of that or die. A certain willpower is required to thrive under the rule of the Brotherhood, and this willpower is not exclusive to the Ubermensch. No subhuman is equal to an Aryan, but not every subhuman is equally vile. There are those who can stand tall and provide for both themselves and the state, possessing certain Aryan qualities even if they themselves might not be Aryan blood. Then there are those that are too, lo too, too low or too weak to do this, who are truly the lowest of the low. The freedom we are offering is a reward to those strong enough to reclaim it. Those who cannot achieve it will suffer what they must. The Brotherhood is building a nation for the Aryan race, but Russia is a vast land, and we will find room for it, or in it, for anyone who can match our people's strength and aid our cause. We do this so that they may prove their strength of will to us. Better line efficiency change. Not bad. Here we go. A little bit of lag. Uh, Africa is falling apart. No one cares. Cool. The right of ascension. Oh, we have more debt, huh? That's not ideal. Thank you very much. Minus 5 billion still? Beautiful. 
This would, oh, I don't really want that many factories. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna grab that many factories. We could really use more main battle tanks. We're, we're doing really well on minus 253. That's not bad. But liberty in name alone. Every day, there are fewer slaves in our nation. Alone and in small groups, they're granted the hard-earned freedom they have strived for. The freedom to choose their future, of course. The Brotherhood has ensured that their options are limited to a few promising opportunities. A newly emancipated slave could go work on an Aryan-owned farm and where their supervised labor would be well paid in housing and food, of course. Or, agriculture isn't to their liking. They could move to one of the revitalized urban jewels of the Brotherhood, working in a factory to assemble products for the Aryan race. Their payment and script will be generous and redeemable at the Brotherhood stores, no matter where their newfound freedom takes them. The Ultimate will never have to worry about being uns unsupervised. Every career available is overseen by Aryan supervisors responsible for organizing and commanding the, uh, commanding the workers. Freed or enslaved, it is their duty to sacrifice for the good of the Aryans. The subhumans will doubtlessly be comforted by the realization that this new life is not so different from the life they already know. More stability, and more stability again. We get double stability. Not bad. What is this? No, nothing up there. That's fine. And then equipment. We must have the equipment. Invest even more in construction. We want to build. Build. We have slaves. We might as well use them. Right? Well, then again, we are not a slave state. Maybe close. But not quite. A clash of gods. The time has come. With the Brotherhood's grip on Russia becoming more firm every day, an issue that many hope will remain hidden has finally risen to the surface. For years, two men have dominated the Aryan Brotherhood, and their hatred for each other has only grown in that time. Guthrum Wagner, the father of the Brotherhood, has seen his dream of the Aryan Russia realized, and has fought to maintain the principles of Aryanism as he originally envisioned them. Everyone in the Brotherhood admires the fear of his genius, but some have become worried about his refusal to even consider a compromise in the face of existential threats to our race. These members have rallied around Siegfried Schultz, the dark horse of the Brotherhood Command, and the self-proclaimed savior of the race. Schultz and his disciplines advocate a radical theory that the Slavs are the true Aryan race, and the Germans that the Fuhrer admires so much are Zionist puppets. Both men refuse to back down from their views, and the ideological war between them has reached a fever pitch. A victory will soon be determined, and the future of the Aryan race hangs in the balance. Russia is only big enough for one tyrant, or ruler. That is an amazing icon. I love this icon so much. Let's see. Exert influence in the Urals. Beautiful. Continue working on our infantry. But unfortunately, I will be right back. Alright, everyone, sorry about that, but the race for the Urals. To our east lay the great Ural Mountains, a traditional border between Europe and Asia. This great mountain range is critically important to our unification ambitions. In the aftermath of the West Russian War and the collapse of the WRRF, the region was left bereft of any central authority. Many communes and villages look to either the city of Orenburg or the soldiers of the Ural League for protection or in intelligence reports. The others fell under the sway of the NKVD remnants of Magnitogorsk, or were sacked by the Delvangas Brigade. Brigade. The rise in tension after the end of the German terror bombing resulted in conflicts that have led to the region's current power structure. The Urals present both an opportunity as well as a threat to our nation. Seizing the area's resources and population will be a great boon to our cause, however. On the far side of the Ural, another unifier state claims its legitimacy as a true Russian government. Were this opponent to capture the Urals, they would be able to station troops on our side of the mountain range, threatening our eastern provinces. We must assert any prominence in the region through any way necessary. Our diplomats and generals have prepared an array of tools to bring the Urals into our sphere of interest. It is projected that the side with the best combination of prestige, diplomatic success, and military intimidation will be able to be tip the first to tip over local elites into accepting unification. Were the diplomatic option to fail, Military intervention remains an option, an option that our eastern rivals are not likely to accept easily. The race of the Urals is upon us. We will triumph, triumph over our Siberian rivals and integrate another part of shattered Russia into our growing nation. Yeah, I've already set up these armies to be split in half. We're just going to go straight into Orenburg. Go straight into these guys, maybe, if possible. Come up through the bottom and wipe them out. But the wrath of the old gods. Wiltrum Wagner hunched over his desk, reading a memo that, uh, without understanding it. His mind was elsewhere, his control over the Brotherhood was slipping away. Every day it seemed like his title of Führer was more and more ceremony while Schultz and his gang were giving the orders. Something had to be done, he could not allow them to destroy the Aryan race, not when it was so close to victory. He heard the door to his office open and he looked up, startled. He had ordered his guards not to let anyone interrupt him. Standing in the doorway was Schultz staring at him. Siegfried, what are you doing? I'm not taking appointments now, go find my secretary if you want to meet. Schultz walked towards him, his hand clutched behind his back. Not speaking a word, he wasn't even looking at Wagner, he was surveying the office. I don't know what the F you're thinking, what you're doing, but I'm out of patience with you. You have five seconds to get out of my sight before my guards come in and teach you not to interrupt me again. 
Schultz met his gaze, and Wagner noticed something had changed. The calm American attitude he usually had was gone. His eyes were wide, and there was a sweat on his forehead. He began walking towards the desk. Wagner pressed a button underneath his desk that would call his guards into the room. We finally let your journey continue for too long, Guthrum. Schultz finally spoke in a hoarse whisper as he rounded the desk. You have butchered and enslaved the true Aryans worshipping the Jewish puppets in Germany. It cannot go on. The race must survive. Wagner slammed the button again and again, but no one came. He started to open the drawer where he kept his pistol, but it was too late. Schultz pulled a dagger from behind his back and plunged it into his neck. A stream of blood sprayed across the walls. Wagner fell to the floor. After a moment, it was all over. Schultz wiped the blood from his face and turned towards the door. One of the guards was watching him. Are you all right, sir? The man asked. Yes. It is done. Wagner, we cannot do this to our race. Out the nationalism and Vilmir becomes leader for the ultra-nationalist party. High priest, more daily political power. And we have finally become what we've always wanted to be, Hyperborea. And now we got more part of the focus tree done. Now that this is done, we can do Into the World, sending a message, our racial cousins. We can't do that. We got to do that with Wagner power. We stand alone. Ultra-nationalism, denounce the Masonic Zionist puppets, deride Burgundy, the matter of our homeland, eastern foes, look to the south, onward to greatness. The Army of the Pure. Ooh, Army Professionalism does go up. I like that one. Ancient Lessons is okay. I like the civilian factors. Let's go to this one. The Army of the Pure. With the new conquest comes new enemies, and we must build a worthy army to meet the challenge. Our military will be a veritable force of nature, in which every single member of it is a pure Aryan warrior. The Aryan is, after all, the perfect killing machine. Battle runs in our blood, and our raid, or our proud lineage, will give us the edge that we need to triumph over the subhuman hordes that are over in the world. Where the German scourge failed, our racial superior champions of Hyperborea will succeed. And once Russia is united, we will have proven toward the world the martial prowess of the Aryan race. Our brothers will brush aside all who would oppose them, and the, and even the laughable farce that causes us up all like, will surely tremble with fear once they find ourselves in our crosshairs. Good. So we're going to wait a little bit. And, oh, we can do this stuff too. Oh, we, I already did the one for equipment. The next one after that, though. Infrastructure's not bad. I like more resources. That's good and all. Oh, wait. Industrial equipment. Construction. Industrial equipment. Okay. Get another military factory, increase GDP, why not? Oh, even even more political power. Even though we should probably save some when we want to integrate this area too, but whatever. Returning expatriates. Ooh, okay, more manpower. Stability is pretty good. Agriculture. Agriculture is actually pretty darn good. Academic base, research facilities. What's, what is else is not going up? We need better poverty, which is going up by 0.25, so we'll probably not get there. 0.25. Ooh. Well, let's go ahead and do industrial expertise just to get it up a little higher. Industrial expertise. Which one was that one? Academic base. There we go. Not bad. And oh, that's a different Vilmir. Huh. I thought, uh. Oh, interesting. Nice swastika. Nice little ribbon there. Very cool. Get our soldiers proclaimed. Because once we go to war with these guys, these guys will go to war with us as well. And they have quite a few soldiers, which is not good. 12,000 manpower, which is not bad. Not great. We have way more, though. They have way more divisions than us, though. Oh, look at that. We need more leaders. He's pretty good. Rathus is not bad. Felix. We need a new field marshal. Someone who has a lot of attack. And he's good on defense. Well, maybe not more attack, but, you know, pretty good on defense. I'm going to go with offensive stuff just because we got to be as offensive as possible. And you know what? Grab that anyways. We'll be on the defensive for a while, too. So. Oh, we have more debt now? No. You don't be. And some of our guys are still missing some stuff. Let's see. What are we missing? Main battle tanks. Artillery is looking pretty awesome as well. Wow. We do have some liquid reserves already. And what can we do here? Launch military. Oh, we can launch military. Yeah, go ahead and do that. That's fine. Cut it down. Almost no debt. That is the true Aryan way. These guys will fold quickly. These guys might fold, they might not. Do we have any air bases? Do we have any planes? Early fighters? Oh, yes. Early cast. Early fighters will be absolutely instrumental in a conquest of Russia. Which we'll focus on the southern Urals first. Brotherhood needs blood? So be it. We have ways of doing this. Nice. 22,000 more manpower? Not bad. Prepare for war? We will eventually. We shall. We shall. Put that in every day. Actually, how many how, how many more days we got? Wow, that's actually quite a while. 62 days. Gosh darn. Well, time for another focus. 
in the sky as their ancestors. Combat schooling change training law to that more monthly army professionalism gain. Training laws. Let's see military stuff. Minimal training. Com that's a huge jump. You get 15% more. Basically attack. The men bred for war. Missarians, we war runs in our blood. It would be foolish to think otherwise. We will establish a specially trained cast of warriors to serve in our armed forces to create a body of manpower consisting of some of the fiercest fighting men the world has ever seen. Rigorous training programs will be created to replace the laughably underdeveloped and lenient remnants of the previous regime's training program or regimen. Our new generation of warriors will come out of the training as cold-blooded war machines ready to die for the sacred fatherland. They will show no mercy to our enemies and will, be, and will not so much as flinch when their servants of the internal Jew will begin to throw their worst at us. Although the new regiment will weed out the countless weaklings, those who remain will be the best of the best. The subhuman hordes will break and shatter upon engaging with our stalwart brothers, and victory shall be ours. Another soldier for the, for the war machine. Good. We actually have 15, so that's actually not too bad. I'm going to cut this down to one again. Because I wanted to at least match the West Siberian People's Republic. And even though we won't have a lot of soldiers, we're going to slowly convert these guys to the Ubermensch. The true Ubermensch. Slightly dead. Weeding out the week. Piotr had passed every trial thrown at him. He had naked through a blizzard. He'd been beaten for an hour without, without crying out. On the first day of his training, there had been over a, hundred, over a thousand men standing with him. Now there were less than 400. Piotr was still standing, but there were more trials ahead. One day, the instructors broke them into groups of 25. Piotr's group was led to a concrete shed and ordered it inside. The interior was a bare windowless room with a dirt floor. Once everyone was inside, the instructor told them that their trial was to stand silently until ordered otherwise. He locked the door and left Pieter and his comrades standing in the dark. The first day wasn't difficult. Pieter's eyes adjusted to the darkness. His legs grew stiff, but he avoided cramps by shifting his weight. His stomach started to rumble in the evening, but he was no stranger to hunger. The most difficult part was staying awake. One of the men fell asleep and toppled to the floor. Almost immediately, the instructors opened the door and dragged him out of the room before relocking him. He didn't even protest as he carried him away. On the morning of the second day, one of the instructors opened the door and asked if anyone, anyone wanted a forfeit. No one stepped forward. The instructor nodded and locked the door. Midday was when the hunger really set in and Pietro could feel his stomach protesting, demanding something to fill it. He tried to focus on the rewards that awaited him when he passed the trial, but the privilege and the prestige of being a part of the army. He'd wanted that for so long, and now he was close. His stomach was getting louder. On the morning of the third day, the door opened again, and the two men crept out. The survivors were ordered to insult them for the first time in 60 hours. Peter heard, had heard his own voice as he hurled verbal attacks at the cowards. The third night would be his breaking point. After three days without food or sleep, three days of licking condensation off the walls of water, he snapped. He started to sob. It seemed like the only sensible thing left to do. The door opened, and two instructors came in and pulled him out of the dark room. Pietro couldn't care less about the mockery from the man still inside. He looked up above them and saw the stars shining in the night. They were beautiful like the eyes of the gods. Good. We're done with the land doctrine. Great. Get some jet engines. In Russia, we can have jet engines. What is this? Oh, propaganda. That's not bad. You know what? Let's get even more weekly stability. I want as much stability as possible. We must be a very, very stable nation. The men bred for war. I'll even this one. The power that defeats all technology. We live in an age where technology dominates every facet of life. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the field of warfare. Machine guns, assault rifles, jet-powered aircraft, and even atomic bombs dominate the discussion of the battlefields today. That being said, we as Aryans know the truth. Technology is a crutch to compensate for inherent racial inferiorities, and is well-known fact that over-reliance on convenience will cause emptiness, weakness, and complacency. As, it, as if we need the tools of weaker men to aid us. We are the master race, and every fiber of our very being is superior to that of our enemies in every way imaginable. All we need to achieve victory is our undying will and the unbreakable com camaraderie of our brothers. These alone will be the key to our success and will prove to be the Achilles heel of the Masonic Zionist army, armies who have grown so accustomed to relying on fancy new innovations. Double bonus for land action. Whoops, I already finished that one. See? Look how good we are. We already finished our land action before we even needed to. Truly Aryan. My tower was owned by Arab administrators. Oh well. Another despot removed. Ne oh, receptive. Neutral. Huh. Current opponent's influence. Doesn't matter. They're all untermensch, anyways. After this, we shall probably do agricultural mechanization, because agricultural stuff is actually pretty darn good. Hmm. Consolidate state resource corpor corporations. Infrastructure is not bad. Sorry, like Christy Fee. Fear and loathing in Los Angeles. Earlier this month, 
Noted author and founder Gonzo of Juno Gonzoism, Hunter S. Thompson, released his newest book, Fear and Loathing in L.A. Set in a surreal alternate history universe with few rules, the work is a pro multi-prolonged satire on other more serious alternate history works, as well as a scathing critique of the culture of the U.S. in the 1970s. Thompson spends dozens of pages going into the minutia of each divergence point, off-color vignettes with within the overarching story that detail how the world of this novel ended up being different from our own. Irrelevant and often nonsensical, these stories detail ridiculous episodes such as Japanese doctor in Unit 731 accidentally trying a hallucinogen hallucinogenic drug on his own concoction, leading him to a pair drop an army of drugged-up ghouls into downtown Tokyo. While critics are somewhat split on these stories, casual readers tired of the oversaturation of the fiction with cheap, overly serious alt history novels have found themselves a welcome, if an odd, diversion from the norm. Linking these various episodes together, Thompson has strung out a very or vague semblance of a plot in this alternate LA, mainly consisting of cheap allegories to attack contemporary American political culture. In one memorable scene, a street gang closely modeled after the Yaquiites beat up a demonstration of old yuppie bigots, Nixon supporters, also referred to as bloodthirsty freaks, all while an inebriated Thompson watches with juvenile glee. While critics and readers alike are sp split on the novel, most at least concede it is a scathing and effective critique of the current literary and political climate. It's different. I guess. But we do not have time for such nonsense. Agriculture must improve. Early industrial robots, very good. Ooh. And we can do that. Let's get some industry. We actually probably really should improve our industry as well. Getting better? Ah, yes. In the the sky as their ancestors. Before the nefarious meddling of the Jews and their Zionist lapdog Germany, the Aryans once dominated the skies like no other race on earth. If we want to make our dreams from rising of the ashes to reclaim our destiny as an attainable reality, our brothers must take to the skies once more, for the first time in our brotherhood's history. A special Air Force wing will be organized for our military. With an Air Force of our own, our forces will once again find themselves leaps and bounds ahead of our enemies, and the Germans will surely think twice before sending their planes to de desecrate our sacred soil ever again. Let the subhuman scum scatter and run for their lives as our dread bro dreaded bombers scream overhead, raining untold death and destruction from the skies. Yeah, absolutely. Constantly. More and more debt. Where is this debt coming from? It's coming from our decisions. Now, if we can win here, uh, we already have close air support, so good. Look at these Untermensch. They cannot withstand us. And even when they counterattack us, they still cannot break us. Just don't look at this one. <laughs> Ornberg. Crush them. The quicker we crush them, the faster we can go to war and beat these guys up. Are we actually at war with them? No, just these two. Oh, that's not too bad. That's actually really easy then. Ornberg is gone. Beautiful. So it shouldn't take too much longer to kill these guys off. Because we have so much manpower. We've lost 2,000 versus 8,000. Beautiful. I am more concerned with the financial matters of our administration right now, though. We must have enough money to pay off, or at least pay the men, so that they may live somewhat good lives for the, for the state. And our skies as our ancestors. The gr ground beneath our feet is giants. Now that our air forces have been organized in earnest, our time has come to begin formulating which tactics our wings will undertake when they take to the skies. A heavy focus will be placed on the ground attack capabilities of our planes, for they will be the key to scattering the unwashed hordes of the east to make them easy pickings for our ground troops. Points have been raised about aerial threats. However, the German and the Luftwaffe continue to foolishly obey the will of the Jew. Stir to our west, while the infamous free aviators will no doubt turn their sights on us as we advance east. These misguided Cretans have deluded themselves into thinking that they are equals, and are in for it. Excuse me, in for a nasty surprise when the errant interceptors rocket through the skies with the fury of the gods to clip their wings and send them to their fiery deaths. Our new state will belong to the Aryan alone, from the ground below to the stars above. Beautiful. With 31 divisions, greater GDP, we shall begin coring. This region. We need more political power. Point eight, huh? Russian reunification. Prepare for war. Has to be at least... Oh, wow. We're about a year off. Wow. We're doing very well. We're doing actually a little better than I thought we would. Looking good here. Only one division at a time, please. Alright. It's time to convert some of our soldiers into... Ubermensch. You, those who are still... Old light infantry. Upgrade. Actually, for you guys. Do you need that much more support equipment for light tanks or recon? Huh. So be it. 
Who needs APCs? You know what? Hmm. We can keep making APCs, I suppose. I might still use them. We still only, only have one factory down them for now. Ooh, actually, we need planes. Early fighters and early casts. Anything else? Not really needed. Good. In the seas is ancient times, recruit by population factor. Anything else here that's really good? Yeah, we must keep doing this. In the seas as ancient times. Our race has a long and proud tradition of ruling the seas. Indeed, in time and memoriam, our glorious and fabled ancestors skillfully navigated the winding or winding rivers of the fatherland and created a new home for the people to thrive and prosper. How can we reclaim our Aryan heritage if we do not follow in their footsteps? The time has come to go one step further and create a navy for the Hyperboreans. Although we are not too, there are not too many waterways available to us right now. Our leaders always looking to the future. Soon our state will stretch across the entirety of Russia, and when that glorious day comes, our navy must be ready for to seize the oceans that were once rightfully ours. Tremble with fear, those who would serve the interests of the Jew for the Aryans are taking to the seas once more. Good. So, I'm not going to train our soldiers yet, even though I would like to. We do not need to yet. As much as I want this stuff to. Uh, you guys just welcome here. Both of you hold. Where's the hold button? There it is. Hold. Hold them dearly. Hold them tightly. <sighs> Yekaterinburg will be ours. Oh, Khrushchev! Oh my goodness. No, Khrushchev must go. He must perish. Never again, Khrushchev. No. A thousand times no. That dead is not looking. That growth, I mean, is not too bad. In the seas, as ancient times. Holds of the faithful, though. Our enemies are on the march, and our army is still completely under men. If we truly wish to continue the fight to save our race from destruction, we will need many more men. Many, many, many more men. We shall begin a massive recruitment drive across the breadth of our territories to swell our ranks and find plenty of battle-ready Aryans willing to lay down their lives for the greater good. Although there are certainly many who doubt the sincerity of our intentions and view our regime with suspicion, they need, or we need, to make them understand that we only have their best interests at heart. We alone fight for the purity and survival of the Aryan race and to reclaim, or claim, our rightful place as the greatest people the world has ever known. Only we can bring, bring the Slavic people to glory in these dark times, and we shall make sure that there are, will be no shortage of devoted new recruits who take these ideals to heart. Better group of population factor, better reinforce rate, and minimum training level goes down by 10%. Good. Very good. We have 32 divisions. That is enough to fill the front lines. More than enough. How many divisions do each of these nations have? Polkarishkin, huh? Up to 28? Up to 25. We will have enough for now. We just have to make ours bigger, better, stronger. And keep, continue building. Right, let's make sure we get all this stuff done, too. My goodness, it takes forever. It's actually core territory. <clears throat> Too many degenerates lay about. Priests marching at drum beats. Honeyed words alone may not be enough to sway the peoples of Russia, and we must accept that many will join our ranks simply out of their own selfish desires or fears. Perhaps. Then there is a more radical approach to this problem. To further aid in indoctrinating their troops, we will create special detachments of warrior priests to help guide and lead their troops as they face the realities of their individual destinies. Rather than filling their heads with nonsense from Judeo-Christian desert cults, our priests will instead inspire the troops with ancient tales and triumphs from the history of their storied ancestors. With spiritual guides at their side at all times, the brothers will surely fight with the fury of Parun himself and forge a glorious new chapter in the history of our race. More speed, recovery rate, and, most importantly, attack. Good. Very, very good. And once that is done, onwards to glory. <clears throat> Brothers, the day we have all awaited is close at hand. Our warriors stand ready. Our guardians in the skies await their prey, and Aryan sailors are re-establishing re dominance over the waters. Our dread hold is hardened and fanatically devoted to the cause, ready to take on the entire world if that is what is needed to, of them. The time for preparations has finally come to an end. Now is the time to march east against the race traders who continue to defy our righteous rule and seize our destiny once and for all. And once the East has been brought under the Aryan rule, once more, our great host will not stop there, for there is still so much work to be done. To our west, the subhuman Germanic scourge that has defiled our sacred land arrogantly continues their unjust occupa occupation of millions of Aryans. This strategy has gone on for long enough. With Siberia secured, we can begin preparations for the final struggle against the Jew and their decadent German puppets. Alright, there was another comment I did not address yet. Uh, that is... 
Someone said that we're committing crimes against humanity? Nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. It is a crime to let these people live without being subservient to the Ubermensch. Absolute nonsense. They're not war crimes against humans if you don't see them as humans. Zimbabwe is defeated. Zimbabwe, Botswana. Mm. Like we care. Cool. All right. Next up is a continue. Oh, right extension is continue doing this stuff. Iron Foreign instructors. We want the greatest military the world has ever seen. Wow. We're improving rapidly at five a month. That's not bad. Oh, we were elected. Oh, look at that. That's nice. I love ultra nationalism. Tukachevsky. Is he still alive? We have to find Oleg Pavlov. Roman Kolchak. Oh. Onward to glory, my friends. And we shall conclude this episode with ancient lessons. All of the wisdom of the world was discovered long ago by the ancient Aryans, only to be forgotten by their descendants. Our ancestors ran a harmonious society free of wickedness and degeneracy, and it is by emulating them that we find success in this world. The same holds true for matters of economics. Rather than sifting through the textbooks of degenerate academics, we will look to the past and ancient days of the Aryan Empire. There were no Jewish financiers or unruly Bolshevik laborers, only wise priest kings who gave orders in accordance to the gods' will and the slaves who obeyed unquestioningly. These lost principles will be the iron foundation of our new economy. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we shall expand Hyperborea and continue our march east. And maybe so. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.